Hey folks, just a heads up that I did receive the product you're about to see me review from Runcam. I did not purchase it at retail. On with the review. These days, it almost never feels like the best use of my time to make a review about a flight controller. It doesn't mean I don't care about new flight controllers that are coming out. It just means I'd rather put a flight controller in a build video or put it in my new product roundup. Every month I do a new product roundup and I go over new products that have come out and I do a big giveaway. In fact, this month's new product roundup is coming very soon. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that giveaway. But today I got a flight controller that has got me, I'm making a whole video about this one flight controller because Speedy Bee has done something really interesting. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Now, in just a little bit, I'm going to tell you the thing about this flight controller that makes it stand out, that made me want to make a whole review video just about it. The killer feature, if you will. But before we do that, let's just look at it as if it was any other flight controller and see what, what it brings to the table. And the first thing that we'll see is it is an F7 flight controller, so we should have plenty of processing power and plenty of UARTs for all the things that we might want to do with the flight controller. And there's not going to be any issues if you're using FreeSky receivers with inversion, SBUS, F-port, SmartPort telemetry, none of the inversion issues that make it so such a hassle to get that working on F4 flight controllers. This plug here is for the ESC, and it does support both ESC telemetry and analog current sensing. Over on the other end, we've got a plug for the DJI Air Unit or the Cadex Vista, which means if you are using DJI, then it's a simple plug and play installation. There's no need to do any soldering to get the, in fact, it may just be a full plug and play, right? You plug the ESC in, you plug the Air Unit in. I guess you gotta solder the motors to the ESC, but other than that, it's a full plug and play install, which is super nice. However, the flight controller does have an OSD chip, which means that if you're doing analog camera or video transmitter, you will get the full functionality. Some DJI capable flight controllers don't include that OSD chip. Like I'm thinking of the Holy Bro F7. With them, if you want to use DJI, you're fine. But if you want to use analog, you're out of luck. This one can do both. Like most flight controllers today, the Speedy BF7 has a USB-C plug, so there's no possibility that you'll plug it in upside down. And I've heard people say, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard people say that the USB-C connects to the board more securely than the micro USB, so there's less chance that it'll get torn off or lift off. I don't know if that's true, but I have heard people say it. Now let's look at the pinout, and it is nice that Speedy B have placed all the relevant pads up against the edge of the board. That's kind of what you would expect. The pads are not the biggest I've ever seen, but not the smallest either. They are surface mount pads. They're not through hole pads. Some people do prefer through hole pads, but the problem with them is that when you have a through hole, it takes up space on both sides of the board. So if we flip this over, we can see that through hole pads would get in the way of like this plug here. Oh, I just noticed this. Really nice that they provided solder pads. These solder pads duplicate the function of the plug here. And that's cool because, well, if you just don't like plugs and you want to direct solder, you can. Or if you accidentally damage the plug, you've got a backup. Or if you're testing, if you need to test that the pinout is right or something, it's really hard to test these pins directly. Sometimes you could get your multimeter probe here on the back of these pins, but it's pretty fiddly. Having solder pads broken out makes it really easy to, to test and just make sure that everything is right. And it's always nice to see a manufacturer take this step. So the solder pads are surface mount, not through hole, and that's fine with me. It does mean that a beginner is gonna have a little bit of a harder time soldering to them. You're gonna need to make sure that you tin and trim your wire very well and to make sure that you don't have any bridges or any contact between the front and the back. But for an intermediate or an advanced builder, this is going to be no problem. Uh, the solder pads are broken out into several different sections. This section here is for the receiver. And uh, I know that because it is marked 4V5 here. Uh, the five most receivers run off of five volt output, but s some flight controllers will have a 4V5 or 4.5 volt output. And that is always intended for the receiver. The reason it's 4.5 volts and not five volts is that it is powered when the flight controller is plugged into USB. 
and you don't want to power any of the other 5 volt accessories like if you have LEDs or a 5 volt video transmitter when you plug in USB you don't want those things to light up and pull too much current from the USB port but you often do want the receiver to power up from USB so you can just bind your receiver and so forth without having to plug a battery in. In order to let the receiver's 5 volt output get power from USB but not anything else there is a diode in place and that diode causes a small amount of voltage drop usually I think 0. 6 volts, maybe 0 0.7 volts. Regardless, that brings the voltage to the receiver down, and that's why we see this labeled 4V5. But that's a tip for you. Anytime you see a flight controller with a 4V5 output, you can assume that that will power up from USB, and that is intended to power your receiver. Not all flight controllers label it this way. Some of them just label it 5 volts, but when you see a 4V5 output, that's what that means. Moving over to the side, we have a spare UART here. We could use this for whatever we want, like that aforementioned GPS, perhaps. That's UART 5, and we've got ground 5 volt, T5, and R5. And then moving over here, this section is for the camera. Uh, we've got 5 volt and ground. We've got VI, which is video in. That's the video signal coming from the camera. We've got CC for camera control, if you're going to try to use analog camera control, which is a feature of Betaflight that lets you adjust your camera settings as if you had plugged a joystick directly into the camera, but you're doing it from your controller. I've got a video about camera control. I'll link it down in the video description. If you never, It doesn't work reliably with all cameras, so a lot of people just don't mess with it, but if you want to give it a try, I'll put the video down there. Uh, you can check it out. And we've got another UART here, T3 and R3, which you could also use for camera control. There's actually two forms of camera control, digital and analog. Check the video in the video description. Or you could use it for anything else you wanted to spare UART for. Moving to the bottom of the board, we've got a section here for LEDs. It's got five volts ground and an LED output, as well as a battery output. If you've got LEDs that are powered from battery voltage versus the five volt regulator. We've got the buzzer section here to power the buzzer. We've got this section here, which is video out. This is for the video transmitter. There's a UART here for use with smart audio, if you're gonna be using that. And there's both a five volt and a nine volt output, as well as you could choose to use the VBAT if you wanted to power your video transmitter that way. Usually you'll get cleaner, pow cleaner video if you're using analog video uh, by using a nine volt regulator, but it's not always the case. Finally, there's another spare UART here with five volt ground UART six and an SDA-SCL pad. If you're using a uh, GPS with a compass, the compass would use the SDA and SCL pads. Oh, and speaking of compass, if you're gonna be using this with a GPS and a compass, you're probably also wondering if there's a barometer. And yes, you can see right here, there is a barometer on board. So does that mean it's also supported by iNav? Maybe. I'll put on screen right here whether there's also an iNav target for it. Seems like it, sh seems like it could be. Now, before we get to the feature of this flight controller that made me want to make a video about it, I have to at least acknowledge that it also can be purchased with a 45 amp 4-in-1 ESC. And um, we've got, got a lot of capacitors here. That's good. And we got some FETs. They look pretty big. We've got some nice beefy pads here. Kind of happy with the size of the pads. They're not edge launch pads though, so you're not gonna be surface mounting them. Uh, the pads are only on one side. Sometimes ESCs will put the pads on both sides for, for backup. Uh, and um, that's uh, about all I got to say about that. It's an ESC and it's 45 amps and maybe it's good or maybe it's bad. We won't know until they get out in the field and we see if they start blowing up, but probably it's okay. It's at least okay. It's BLHO 32. Sorry, I'm just, BLH32 ESCs basically all perform the same. They have different amp ratings, and then some of them are better designed and don't blow up. And some of them are worse designed and blow up, and there's just no way to really know. Okay, if you're drone mesh, you put them on your oscilloscope and you look at them and you decide what you think, which I don't, I personally just think you just fly them and then see if they blow up. Anyway, sorry, sorry, Runcam or Speedy B. Runcam is Speedy B. Sorry, Speedy B. I'm dead, dead. It's just an ESC, what are you gonna do? <laughs> well, okay, it's time. In order to show you the feature that made me wanna make a video about this flight controller specifically, I gotta plug it in and power it up. As you might expect from the name Speedy Bee, this flight controller has a built-in uh, Bluetooth radio. And that means that you can use the Speedy Bee app, 
to configure it. That's not the, th you're going, oh, it's not a Speedy B app, that's not new. No, the, many flight controllers have this feature, although to be fair, Speedy B was the one I think that pioneered it. But in case you haven't seen it, I'm just gonna hit the Bluetooth button here. It's gonna find this flight controller um, and this flight controller has a new type of Bluetooth interface that you can see here, it immediately found it. We also have the option to search for other older Bluetooth devices. Um, but I'm just gonna hit connect here. And here we are in the Speedy B interface, which basically is just beta flight configurator for your phone, wirelessly. You don't need to plug into your quadcopter at all. Just plug it in, the battery, set it down, do whatever you need to do, change whatever you need to change. And Speedy B has the ability to do more than just configure it. Any Bluetooth device can configure it, but this Speedy B app can also flash. We go to firmware flasher and we can flash either beta flight or emu flight. And we can select that Speedy B F7 V2. So basically this is, if you've ever used the Wi-Fi Speedy B adapter, this is similar to that, but there's even a little more functionality added here. In addition, they've added another function to SpeedDB, and that is the black box analyzer. Yep, you can download and analyze black box logs directly from the flight controller. Uh, there's no black box data on this flight controller yet because I haven't flown it, but you can download and analyze it directly from the flight controller without ever plugging in a cable. It's pretty freaking slick. The last thing about this flight controller that I think is really freaking cool is until now, in order to do all this stuff, you had to give up a UART. You had to assign one of your UARTs to the MSP protocol, and that's how the flight controller talked to the Bluetooth device. Or you could use the plug-in SpeedyB adapter and you could plug into the USB. But I've always agreed with people who were like, why would I, if I wanna plug into my flight controller, I would just use a USB cable. I don't need to use the SpeedyB adapter. In this case, you get the best of both worlds. This Wi-Fi adapter and Bluetooth adapter are directly connected to the processor. They do not take up a UART. And in addition to that, RunCam has, or SpeedyB, has automatically set them up so that it powers down when you arm and powers back up again when you disarm, so it's not gonna interfere with the, with anything like your receiver or your video. So this is a really cool flight controller with a lot of cool features. Um, I'm always looking for anything that makes something stand out as unique. Uh, because a lot of times flight controllers, they all have kind of the same features and maybe you like one better than the other, but what makes something really jump out? And SpeedyB have really accomplished that with this one. This is a pretty solid F7 based flight controller. And if you're the kind of person who wants to set up a flight controller without using a computer, I think this is your best choice. No adapter needed, just a smartphone and the SpeedyB app, and it does the rest. You can flash it, you can configure it, you can do everything you need to do. I guess technically, if you have a BLHeli 32 ESC, I don't think you can manage that stuff without a computer yet. Maybe someday. Yeah, there's a BLHeli configurator, but it only works with BLHeli SESCs. BLHeli 32 is locked down, and so you would still need a computer to configure the ESC, I guess, but most of the time you don't need to configure the ESC. You don't need to update the firmware, you just get the motor direction right, and you can do that by swapping wires on the ESC. So there you go, you could build a whole quadcopter without a computer with just your smartphone and this flight controller. Okay, if you want to buy what uh, blah, blah, blah. if you want to buy this flight controller in ESC, there are links in the video description. They are affiliate links, and that means that if you click those links and make any purchase at the affiliated store, uh, I get a commission of that purchase. So it's a great way for you to support the channel. Just click those affiliate links before you do your shopping. And if you want to check out this prod product, uh, more power to you. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am and I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel. Or maybe join my Patreon or, or click one of click one of these videos I picked out for you. <gasps>